Well, I grew up during World War II, and I was living in Germany shortly after the war. My father was a civilian with military government in the, uh, in the occupied American zone, and that was where I saw my first Holocaust films. And it was a life-changing experience. I was, I was 16, I think, and nothing was ever quite the same again. And when I went to Ethiopia for the first time in 1981, what I saw was an abandoned Jewish world. And if you, if you remembered World War II, even from the safety of America, and you learned about the Holocaust from reports, not from, God forbid, having been in it, you just couldn't turn around and walk away from a Jewish community in big trouble. Now, I grew up in a very assimilated family, and I said, you know, I only know one thing about Jewish organizations, and that's that there are too many of them. And I don't see what an organization can do that an individual can't do, and an individual can't do anything in Ethiopia. It's under this terrible communist rule. You can hardly sneak around Ethiopia as a white person who doesn't speak the language and, and looks rather conspicuous, and they won't let us go to any Jewish villages, and you can't send them anything by mail. So what's the point? And my friend said, an organization can do more. And in the end, I said, all right, all right and four of us got together in, uh, in my living room and um, started talking. Well, to be on the last plane of Operation Solomon was first of all knowing you had participated in a miracle. Uh, it just couldn't have happened, and it did happen. We see people pull themselves up out of poverty with a little help at the right time, in one generation. That's not supposed to happen, especially when you have a gap as big as the gap between life in Ethiopian mud hut villages and life in modern Israel. And it does. I've always thought if you were scared of something, that meant you couldn't do it. it turned out you could. Uh, being afraid was just one of the things you had to deal with and, and go ahead and do it. That was an amazing thing. Um, I don't know if it was in my nature before, or not, um, but it must have, there must have been something that didn't mind an adventure if it had a purpose. Uh, I was going through at one point a fear of heights. In fact, I had it when I went to Ethiopia, which was uh, not a good thing to be sitting on a mule in the Semian Mountains uh, to have at the time. And uh, the year after I had been to Ethiopia, I went to Burma with friends of mine, and um, we went to a town called Pagan, which was largely unexcavated pagodas. And I remember when um, my, my friend's husband, Gabriel, climbed to the top of one of them and called to Carol and me and said, hey, come on up here, that's a beautiful view. And I looked up at this thing, and I said, Gabriel, is there an endangered community of Jews on top? He said, no, I said, then I'm not going, I'm scared of heights. <laughs> and to, to be part of this story and know you've played some part in it, um, <laughs> that's, that's something that just fills you with more amazement.